Not quite. <laughs> All right. Well, good evening. I'd like to re reconvene this meeting in open session. Welcome to this evening's hybrid board of trustees meeting being held both in person and virtually. This meeting has been made accessible to members of the public on the link of the Moreland School District website, as well as on board docs. Any person who requires accommodations to access the meeting has been asked to contact the superintendent's office within 24 hours of this meeting. This meeting is being recorded and may be published online at a later date. So we will jump right into the flag salute. I think we have some fifth grade Baker Bobcats in the audience to lead us tonight. Is that true? Yeah, come on up to the podium. <laughs> All right, let us know what to do. Ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the God of the United States of America and to the Republic, which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> How'd we do? Did okay? All right, good job. All right, well, welcome to a board meeting. Why don't you each take a turn of introducing yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you like about being a Baker Bobcat. Oh, my name is Audrey, and I like how we have can do student, student leadership, and it's really fun. All right. My name is Luke, and I really like that we have like so many fundraising events for our school. Oh, my name is Zoe, and I really like how our teachers are really nice, and they cheer us on when we're doing stuff. Um, and even if it's, a, if it's hard, we don't give up. Hmm. My name is Natalie, and I really like the catwalks at our house. Oh. Uh, my name is Reba, and I really like um, all the fun spirit days that we have. Sounds good. Catwalk is coming up, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, fabulous. Um, yeah. So, um, hi guys. Um, it says here that you guys are the Baker's part of Baker's student leader group. Yes. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Some, yeah. Um, some of the options of being a student leader is you can help out with assemblies and you can even help out pick um spear days. So mm -hmm. that's some of the options. Okay. Um, there are many jobs, like one of my jobs is being a puddle jumper. So when it's raining, we'd go to another class while the teacher's in the office eating, mm -hmm. but we would watch over the kids. Oh, that's awesome. uh, one of my jobs is we get to be student leaders and we get to uh, we get to puddle jump. Mm -hmm. And then we also get to do junior yard duty, which mm -hmm. is really fun because you get to take care of the younger, the lower grades. Um, and they're very fun to play with and hang out. <laughs> awesome. My job is to go up for the assemblies and sing and make their songs. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, one of my jobs, uh, my only job actually, is that, <laughs> um, um, like, at, to add on what Lou and Tommy said, it's mm -hmm. puddle jumping. Mm -hmm. So we could, like, go in the classrooms and help out, like, all the kids on rainy days when we can't go. Yeah, it's really fun. That's awesome. And I have just one more question. What, I guess, motivated you guys to become, you know, to join and be a student leader? Um, I think it was like the different options, and it seemed really fun seeing the older kids do it in the past mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I like to do. Um, for me, it's really fun, and plus, it also makes me feel a little bit more independent. It can really help in the future. Okay. Right. Um, I feel like in fourth grade I did it too, but okay. I really liked how we get to help people and we're like persevering and we're being, I feel like we're being really um, independent. Um, I like showing younger kids helping out. Uh, I like it because we get to help out like our school and help out your duties and stuff like that. 
Awesome. You guys have like such great answers for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, you asked all the questions. I'm I was sorry. Asking, you know? <laughs> but um, uh, I'd like to thank you girls for all coming in here. Um, I can tell that just your motivation it makes you great public speakers. Being able to stand in front of a crowd isn't very easy. Being able to lead not just uh, our group, but even uh, your uh, fellow classmates, as well as uh, the younger grades at your school, because you're all fifth Greater. graders, am I right? So you're the top of the class there. Um, so it's really exciting to hear you guys uh, put yourself out there, um, take that leap of uh, leadership and grow yourself, like you said, and take those chances. And I know you guys are developing really great ideas on how to um, get, you know, lead the, lead others. Do you guys have any um, suggestions uh, that you guys have tossed around in terms of like what other great ideas uh, you can do to lead the school? Have you guys talked about that? Well, I have an idea about that. Um, well, so we used to do this thing where we would like volunteer to help pick up trash and help the custodian and clean the uh, well, clean the campus. And I think it was called Campus Beautification. Um, and I feel like it really helped, and I feel like we should do it. Fantastic. Yeah, keep thinking of those ideas. Those are great ways to bring back that community. And we love to see this from our students. Uh, we appreciate your guys' help. Are there more? I mean, how many people are composed? Is it primarily the five of you, or is there a, uh, a couple of other students who are able to um, join? Not just us. No, just, just we won't. This is great. That's great. Thank you guys, girls for coming in. Dr. Todd. Well, I am just impressed with how confident you are standing in front of us. You don't look nervous. You don't sound nervous. I get nervous. So I just am trying to figure out where I can get some tips from you all as leaders. Um, thank you for sharing um, your families with us tonight, for leading us in the flag salute, and for just being leaders in your school and in your community. I really appreciate it. And I'm very proud of all of you. So thank you for coming tonight. Good job. Feel free to go home. <laughs> You're, of course, welcome to stay, but thank you guys. Have thank a good you one. so much for coming. <clears throat> <laughs> Biggest fan over there. Oh. <laughs> we got a couple of fan club. <laughs> I'll report out um, that there was no action taken this evening in closed session and move to approval of tonight's agenda. I'll move to approval. And I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Comments from the public? Sure. Right. Um, members of the public may address the board on any subject of concern to you, including those not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act preclude any action as an unagendized item, no response is required or permitted from the board or district staff, and as already stated, no action can be taken. The board, however, may, may instruct the superintendent to follow up, which may or may not include placing the item on a future meeting's agenda. If you would like to address the board this evening, please complete the blue public comment card within the first 15 minutes of the board meeting being called to order in public session. On the card, please list the agenda items you would like to speak to. If your comments do not pertain to an agendized item, please write public comment. When your name is called, please come to the podium and state your name and organization that you are representing. Comments are limited to three minutes per board governance manual, and it looks like today we do not have any public comments. Okay, okay moving right on. Right along, indeed. Superintendent's report, Dr. Cobb. Sure. Um, I'll start by wishing Evangeline Reyes a happy birthday. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and this next um, story is, I am just so excited to share uh, the heroes amongst us uh, this evening and just the heroes within our Moreland community. So, you know, we talk a lot about what makes Moreland so, spe so special, those Moreland magic moments. And this is one um, I hope I can get through without, I don't think I can get through it without getting emotional. But so I'm just gonna start. Um, 
So we are so proud of two Moreland parents and a former Moreland student who were honored recently with the prestigious Simpson Silva Award from the San Jose Police Department for their incredible courage and quick action in saving the life of a three-year-old drowning victim at the South Bay Cabana Swim Club. We also would like to present the following individuals with their certificate to recognize their contributions to our community. So I will name them. I will say a few words about them. And so just kind of hold on for a second. So we've got uh, Ms. Janelle Schumacher, Mr. Milko Todoro, and Ms. Nadia Bugadush. No, I want to say it right. Bugadush. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Um, amongst us. So Ms. Janelle Schumacher was one of the lifeguards who was on duty. She is a former Baker Bobcat and MMS Mustang. The 20 year old is also the daughter of Latimer reading intervention teacher, Ms. Julie Sch Schumacher, mom who is here in the audience uh, tonight to accept the certificate on her daughter's behalf. Janelle is currently attending college in Fullerton. Um, Mr. Uh, Todora was recognized for pulling the three year old child from the pool. He is a Baker elementary parent with a first grader. Um, he was unable to attend tonight, but we still want to honor him. And then we have Miss Nadia Bugashush, who was recognized for her incredible courage and quick action performing the CPR accredited with saving the life of a three-year-old child. She's an EDS parent with a third grader. And in addition to that, we have Captain Treyer, husband of EDS teacher Amy Treyer here in the audience, who was able to be at the award ceremony. And so just this incredible showing of our Moreland, I, 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 don't look at me, of our Moreland community for literally saving the life of a three-year-old child. And so to all of you, I just want to say thank you. Um, such incredible work. And um, we wanna give you a round of applause. And I believe we also have some Yes, oh, yes, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Serves as just a great reminder in the importance of being CPR certified. Um, I just can't thank you enough. Um, be well and continue being great in our communities. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, first, first. Oh, okay, okay, good. Um, so last week, the Moreland School District was honored with a certificate of recognition from the California Assembly and a special recognition award from the Santa Clara County Office of Education as part of the department's LGBTQ plus history month showcase. Moreland was nominated because of the Moreland Middle School's Unity Club and the support for the LGBTQ inclusion and education as well as the staff development. I wanna congratulate Ashley Benjamin, the advisor who launched the Unity Club and was there to accept the award, along with Grace Kim and Claudia Ott for their involvement. Moreland was highlighted for its dedication to inclusivity in education and efforts to create a more inclusive and supportive learning environment where every student can thrive. So I wanna say congratulations to all of them. And a beautiful, I uh, um, a beautiful certificate. Like, we'll, we'll make sure that we get it framed, but it's gorgeous. 
Um, October, don't forget it's National Principal Appreciation Month, Principal Assistant Principals. Um, thank them for all the hard work they do. And, you know, we, we get to thank them by having them come join us. <laughs> so you're welcome. Um, uh, the staff at the district office, as well at the sites, we have been planning for our annual emergency preparedness. We will have a district-wide drill for the great shakeout on October 17th. All of the schools in the district office take part in this. Um, and we run a simulation as if there's a real big earthquake where we are going to need to take care of ourselves for a good 72 hours without um, emergency, um, what am I trying to say? Emergency personnel. Oh, we are the emergency personnel in this case. And so um, we are going to be sending out a message from me to all of our families that this is happening along with just reminders about making sure that you have your emergency contacts up to date, you know, how we communicate in the case of an emergency, making sure that we people understand our protocols for when you're picking up your child in the event of emergency and how we have people show their IDs. It's very informal and systematic. So that will be going out um, this week in order to remind parents about that. Um, let's see, so the Moreland Education Foundation has launched their fall 2024 grant application. It's open to students and teachers, um, staff and families. They can apply for a grant that supports the Moreland schools. Um, it can fund education, enrichment, engagement and community building programs. The deadline to submit an application is October 22nd. And this year, MEF is prioritizing grants that support our districts and schools efforts to implement Goal two in our strategic plan, was, which is focused on students being actively engaged in their communities and globally aware. So thank you, Emia. Uh, and then lastly, we continue to spread the word regarding Measure U. We've been presenting at home and school clubs, PTOs, neighborhood associations, and then the campaign side of it has been working on their phone banking, getting volunteers, supporting uh, the neighborhood canvassing efforts that we have, passing out yard signs, campaign is in full swing. Mailers are, I believe the mailers have been sent and you should have received your mailer from the campaign. From the district front, front, we are allowed to share all the facts about Measure U. We recently sent all of our community members a letter letting them know that seniors who are 65 and older are able to apply for an exemption from the tax. Um, we are keeping our website up to date and directing volunteers to over to Melissa Ryan, who is our campaign manager. Um, so we'll continue to just get the words um, out to our community and let Melissa know if you'd like to volunteer your time and efforts. Um, that concludes my remark for this evening. Perfect. Thank you. Board member communications. Um, oh, I, yeah. I mean, there's like three of us, but I will, <laughs> I was like looking around as if, as if there was more. Um, I will go for it. First, it was a busy two weeks. Um, it started off with a site visit with Brian uh, to MMS. Uh, which it was actually really great because we had seen MMS such so it was like kind of nice to see what they were working on. Um, they, along with Latimer, I believe, implemented AVID, and it was so cool to see um, every class you walk in, um, folders were out, teachers were already telling students, like, make sure you organize it. So it was really good to see that building up on the executive functioning skill, a lot of emphasis continuously on um, SEL learning. Um, um, it was a treat. Um, we went into their reflection center, and so it was really, <laughs> really great because they have, um, um, they have, for you know, for each student that comes in, they have like a set process of like what you would do, how you reflect, how you submit, and how you kind of learn from it. So I thought that was also um, really great. So I can thank you to um, Teresa, Yoni, um, and just showing us around. Um, Carol and Melissa were a little bit busy, but <laughs> they're doing more important stuff. Um, and then I had the um, opportunity to attend President's Council. I just want to say thank you. It was great to see familiar faces like and um, new faces. Um, and I just can tell they're just working really hard. Lots of events. <laughs> I feel like, like every weekend there is something going on. And so it just shows a lot of um, work and effort that they spend on really kind of bring the families together, bring them connected with the schools. Really, again, the moral and magic that Dr. Claude was talking about. I'm really bringing that in. So I want to say thank you to them. Um, and then last but not least, I had the 
um, opportunity to go phone banking. It was a riot. It was it was, it was fun. fun. It, it was, was a riot. <laughs> um, it was um, also just because I got to spend some time with some country lane parents. That was really great. Um, left a lot of voicemails. Um, <laughs> but a fun way. Uh, maybe not fun, but a very um, interesting way to spend my evening. And I really encourage everyone else to, if you have time, to go volunteer. But yeah, so that was that was my two <laughs> weeks. Uh, my board visits are, are coming up in the next couple of weeks, so um, I have no additional <laughs> uh, activities to report. Um, I'll just share that Brian and I uh, attended a Latimer visit mm -hmm. where they do they are implementing AVID um, school wide, and I just have to say it is a real treat. I hope I hope the principals here. Me when I say principal appreciation month, by the way, <laughs> that's right. It is a real treat to hear the SIPSA and then be able to be on campus and see it in action. Um, and so I know that it's a, it's a commitment, the time that you spend with us, but it is so meaningful and so important. And um, we really, really appreciate it. So not only the time spent on the SIPSAs and, re and sharing it here, but then the site visits to show us it in action is just, it's really something. So it's special. And I want to make sure you know how much we appreciate that. Um, I attended the last MEF meeting, as did Clover. Um, and what I'm excited about is that they've got some new leadership. And so they're looking to fill all their um, student or student school reps for um, their full board. And they're getting there. So Anna's doing a really good job. And I'm excited about the pumpkin patch, which opens this Friday. Friday. Yeah, this week. Friday. So good stuff coming up. All right, on to reports and action items. We'll start with Baker. Yay. <laughs> well, good evening. Um, I'm this is our staff on the Burfico School. We look very tired at the Friday. We're <laughs> <laughs> staff for showing, you know, some excitement. And just to start, like, being a new admin team at Baker, like, the staff, the community, the parents have been awesome. So um, we really feel that we are welcomed and super excited for this school year. So um, we'll look at language arts data first. Um, our primary FMP, um, just a snapshot of our TKers right there working on their reading stamina in the library. Um, they're awesome, already engaged in books. Um, so if we look at our FMP data, if you follow um, like the blue kinder, that's the red first grade. And if you look at the first grade in blue, that's the red second grade. So you can kind of see the trend of the crack clap as they're moving, um, kind of comparing the groups and co cohorts. Um, our goal this year is about a 7% increase in our FMP score. FMP scores, our primary teachers are really focusing on using all the PE they received last year on Jan, Jan, Jan Richardson and just that small group instruction and incorporating the writing from this year. Um, and when we look at FMP, we know the difficulty as they move up, it gets much harder as they pass different levels. So then there's that comprehension piece, the text is harder. And then also our site is really having some conversations about the calibration of the test to make sure, you know, kinder, first and second are all on that same level. Um, and our next slide has our subgroups for F and B. Real quick, that's our one-two combo. They're doing a small group with um, sight words and then using that sight words in sentences that they were trained with that. And if you look at our um, F and P subgroups, um, it has a slight dip in our Hispanic and SPED. Um, our goal this year is to increase by 8%. And um, we just included our current population, so you have an idea of what our Baker um, community is now. 23% Hispanic, 25% English learners, we're at 17% SPED, and then our SED was 15% last year. Um, just looking at our ELA data from third through fifth grade, um, our goal this year is to have a 7% increase to 77%. They saw a slight dip last year, but we are moving forward, hopefully, to make some gains this year. And when we look at our subgroup data, um, that's a little picture of our uh, RISE intervention program. That's with a fourth grade group. 
Um, so this is our ELA subgroups. Um, we did see a slight dip in our English learners in SPED and Hispanic. And our goal is to increase that group by 10%. And when we were looking through this data, we really wanted to look back. So we went back to about 2020. And we saw like the population has really changed. Baker was 19% EL in 2020. And now we're at 25%. So the students we're serving have changed. They have different experiences. So our teaching is needing to change. And we are working on altering that to meet the needs of our students. And then um, in 2020, Baker's population was 12% SPED. And as you can see, now we're at 17. So again, we're seeing our students are changing. So really um, working on how we tweak our teaching and our methods and what we're, what we're actually doing. Um, and like I said, our goal is to increase by 10%. And then we started to look at the data a little bit more in depth. Um, so of our students that took the SBAC, um, our third through fifth graders, 44 of those students are SPED students, and then 39, for, 39 of those students are EL, mm -hmm. and 15 of those students are both EL and SPED. So really looking at what students we really need to target, what are the students um, that are struggling in those categories. So really putting a name to them and being aware of what we need to be really focused on, uh, really targeting them. And then um, some key actions we lifted here, um, small group reading instruction that we have talked about for the last couple of years, um, really taking that PD we've learned and implementing it. We want students talking to each other, really looking at their notes, talking about the text is so important, um, that reading, writing connection. Um, so incorporating all those things we've learned. Um, we've talked a lot about reading stamina, getting students reading in text, um, right away, we know the faster we do that, the more growth we tend to see to challenge them with their text. Um, our intervention, we have three intervention teachers and an aide working with our students. And we've really tried to be very targeted with that, with having pre-tests, post-tests, and really seeing what's working, what's not working, and then seeing how we can adapt. Um, looking at the data, at data club days, and really being focused, and what are we actually looking at with our students that are right in front of us? What do we need to work on with that current group? Um, implementing our tier two supports for those students at risk, focusing on rigorous work, and then um, a key thing our team is really working on this year is that feedback on instructional practices. As an admin team, just really being in classrooms, being visible, um, kind of understanding the pulse of the school. So when we have conversations with teachers on instruction or other staff, we're able to kind of validate what we see and just kind of have that grassroots perspective. Um, I think our staff really values that. And then um, just making sure the supplements we're using uh, match what students need. And then another area we're really focusing on is goal setting with students where teachers um, three through five have kind of sat one-on-one -on -one with the students and looked at their iReady scores and looking at, okay, so in a couple months you're taking iReady, what's your goal? What are you trying to get to? And kind of, um, so the students kind of have some ownership of their own data that they understand it has purpose. And even if they're not reaching that goal, that they make some kind of growth and looking at their stretch growth. And then we just have the extra dose of um, things we are doing with our ELs. Right, now we'll look at our math data. Um, this is our third through fifth grade F back, and there was a slight decline of 3%. Um, our goal this year is to have a 7% increase for our students that are meet or exceeding. That would bring us to 75%. And this slide focuses on our math subgroup data. Um, there is a picture of a student working with their fourth grade teacher actually doing that goal setting I was referring to. So they were, um, coloring in where they were on iReady, and then also setting that goal. So again, making them a part of their data. Um, and in this subgroups, we see there was an increase in our Hispanics, but our other groups did take a, a dip, a little deep decline. And so we'll continue to look more into the data to try to see what specific groups, like I said in our EL, really our ELA, just what are those students and how can we target them? And then we do know, I know, um, I've listened to the other presentations, so I know it's a similar topic, but 
in math, all students take it, even if they are new to the country. So then when there's that academic language, that new vocabulary, we know math is heavy in vocabulary and word problems. Um, some of our students that are struggling, our English learners or some students are taking that same test. So it is pretty challenging. And then our key actions for math, um, just that collaboration effort to look at data and planning. Um, our next meeting we're doing next month with our grade levels that they're doing some uh, vertical um, alignment so they can come together and see like what holes do I see these students are having or what are they really strong in? What did you do really well in? Just to keep those conversations going between teachers. Um, and then kind of a laser focus on our curriculum and our scope and sequence, making sure we are completing the modules prior to the testing, have time for review, because it's a heavy load for teachers really to have all that curriculum taught prior to assessment, to state testing. So making sure that's done, um, small group instruction, pulling back kids for reteaching. It's at grade level, and then also those kids that are excelling, making sure we're giving them um, that small group instruction, um, taking time to look at our data, um, looking at our students that are at risk, what are we doing for them to help them, all those tier two interventions our staff is really working hard on, um, what are the programs we're using to supplement instruction, all those things, again, that student goal setting, making them understand their part of, of their work, giving them that ownership. Um, we're starting some after school map tutoring for some students, and then also just that family engagement we're trying to catch. So we're doing a family math night where parents can learn, um, you know, how to do math games, how to help your student when they're struggling, just to kind of get parents more in their toolbox. Because we as educators know, because we live it, but often parents don't know little tools or strategies to help their child. The next part is our English learners. Um, here, this is a picture of, um, Mr. Manny, he's like the most amazing person on our, he's awesome on our campus. The kids love him and he's working with a small group, um, really doing that targeted EL instruction. This is a, uh, what we would call some newcomers. Um, engaged, they are talking. It is a loud, busy group, which is exactly what it, what it should be. Um, so this slide is looking at uh, our English language data and we see that they are making progress. Um, and just to note, as we started looking in the data, um, last year we started the year with 81 EL students and we ended with 91. So we are seeing a growth throughout the year of new students coming. And a trend like we've seen with other schools is we are getting some newcomers that are new to the country. So they have very little to no English. And we're also seeing they don't have a strong base in their first language. So then for them to learn, English is really challenging. So um, something that takes time and really we're continuing to work on that. And then some key actions here is just um, continuing to have those print rich classrooms where there's, um, you know, anchor charts, examples of students work, um, co-constructed print where students really are a part of that whole process of the learning, um, just that language rich environment. Um, increasing the time on text for all of our students, but especially our English learners, making sure they're talking, getting those conversations going, um, less of the teacher talk, more of the student talking, um, giving them the structures and things they need, whether it be um, you know, sentence frames or sentence starters um, to make them more successful, um, just giving them lots of opportunity to be exposed to the language, and continuing all the programs we have, um, we're supplementing with like the Hello program, Benchmark Express, teachers are using that in their classroom for small groups. Um, continue our extra dose for our EL newcomers, and then just really that parent relationship in our ELAC community and also our community. We want all of our parents to feel welcomed on our campus, to feel like they matter, they are a part of our campus, and listening to them and getting their input and what they feel we need to do to help their children. And then our next part is our Baker School Climate. And this is our student, our, excuse me, our student climate data from last year. And then we have um, some fourth and fifth grade new duty, our duty helpers up there and there's sporty yellow vests. And then um, this is a picture of some of these students did the flag salute. That was our first spirit assembly with Bobcat. Um, 
They basically did the whole assembly. They were awesome. So um, our goal this year is to get a 7% increase in student responses for school belonging in our teacher-student relationship. And we really want to get to know our students more than just their academics to really get to know them. And we know when we have that relationship, they're more likely to be successful. They have a better outlook at school. They want to come to school. Just all of that helps. Then our next slide is our teacher climate data from last year. This is our staff at our iReady training. Um, we learned a lot of that, including how to do the goal setting that you saw earlier. Um, but this was from September. And um, our goal this year is to get a 10% increase in each of the areas that are up there and with a super fo focus on that feedback and coaching and school leadership. And again, when we feel that we're more visible, all of that kind of will come together. So we're really trying to get to know our staff. And then the next slide is our family climate data. We have our catwalk photo from last year, and then we had a, that's a Baker um, parent coffee in the garden one morning, and then some students arriving, walking or rolling to school. And then our goal here is really just to increase that school fit by 8% to 80%. We want all of our students to feel welcome, like, they have a real sense of belonging, no matter who they are at Baker. And some key actions. Um, I've already talked about some, but I will highlight that for you again. Um, just the student involvement. So again, um, getting our Bobcats involved, that fourth and fifth grade leadership team. There were a few of them here. There's about 40 of them in fourth and fifth grade, and just making That's sure. Five. 40 yeah, it's, it's five, but it's <laughs> just they're in different groups, but uh, just making sure they feel like they have a say in things, like they're actively engaged in like sharing their ideas. Like, I love how you asked them about the trash. I'm like, oh, we can do that. Like, yeah. why not? So, um, just getting them involved because they have, again, that ownership as they get older and it carries with them. Um, you know, just continuing the PBIS, safe, respectful, responsible in all the areas of campus. We have Paw Pride ticket system and then um, Baker bags, like trying to catch our students being good, reinforcing that positive. Um, continue with all the SEL, getting kids to self advocate and really um, talking about those restorative practices, um, getting back to having them work on what are their problems, solving their conflicts. Um, repairing relationships. And then for our staff, one of our huge goals really this year is just, like I said, um, being visible, giving that feedback, getting in classrooms, uh, whether it's talking to aides or, or teachers or anyone that's involved in campus, just really giving that feedback to um, really get a good pulse on the school. Um, looking at how our teachers can be, continue to be building a relationship with students, embracing that supportive environment, and really you know, anyone that goes to Baker is a Baker student, no matter, you know, who their teacher or what grade. And then um, we've been trying to do a lot of positive. We've been sending postcards home from teachers, positive notes, you know, positive phone calls. Um, what parent, like, doesn't want to hear that? So just um, continue to do that. And then just building that student-teacher relationship, as we said. And then with families, um, just getting... Being new to Baker is just really, uh, myself and Miss Wiley is just really being visible, listening to teacher. I mean, listening to families, getting to know them. What do they want to see? Like, do they want a chess club at lunch? Are we wanting a Pokemon club? Just kind of listening to what parents feel their students would love. Um, and then seeing what parents need when we give out surveys or talking to parents, if they're mentioning there's, we're hearing a pattern of parents needing more support with certain things. Um, listening to that and responding to that feedback. Um, lots of ways for parents to get involved depending on um, if they're working or what their interests are, like our VISTA program, ABC Reader, International Fair, a variety of home and school club events, just bringing parents in, welcoming them for anything. And then um, just partnering with our home and school club, um, just really working on those community events. Um, for all of our Baker families. Then, um, oh, that's fine. Um, on our Prop 28 funds, we're super fortunate to have this this year. 
We're doing starting arts um, for third through fifth grade. They have a theater focus and an eight week rotation, and that starts um, in about two weeks. And then in January, our TK through second have um, a music lab, and it, that, that's an eight week rotation. And then this year, we have really focused on using our money on our Art Vista program. And we've really created like an art classroom. It feels um, very artsy if you come, almost like an art studio. The person we hired is a real artist. She's also a Baker parent. But um, when you see the students in there, they're just loving it. And what the what they teachers do is they sign up for a class um, every other month, and then there is a lesson. Um, she preps the lesson, she does the lesson, she cleans up the lesson, which is also very nice. It's all in one room, and we've had a great amount of um, parent volunteers. They sign up. Um, we've had really good feedback from the students and the staff. They really enjoy it. Um, yeah, so um, good to be involved again. Uh, <laughs> of them in action and um, just super excited about this year. You know, um, we have an awesome community and a great staff and amazing students, and we just look forward to all the work ahead. So. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Um, no, I, I guess I have one. Um, I think it is really interesting to hear how the population demographic has really changed throughout the within such a short amount of time. And I'm sure there's a lot of challenges that come with that. And I was wondering if there is any way that we as a board can also help support you in that because like, yeah, again, like I said, just such a quick turnaround in like the demographic of kids. Um, but yeah. yeah. And I think it's really our area we live in, right? All of us have noticed, right. and that's inevitable. Like things are going to change. And I think it's just being open to changing the way we have done things mm -hmm. and like retraining our brain to maybe, oh, now I have a different set of learners. I might need to tweak what I've done. Right. So just being open to that, I think um, we've had a lot of professional development and things have been shared with us that we can you know, um, mix into instruction, talk about things in staff meetings. And it's really um, kind of this, having the staff give feedback as well. Like what are they, what do they need more support in? Um, and I know anytime we have asked a lot of things, like for example, our EL learners, we've had a lot of instruction on that, how to help them, a lot of support with that. It's really just, continuing to keep learning, right, as an educator and really trying to implement those things. And they're all our students, right? And so we just have to teach the students that are with us, right, that are in front of us. So just being flexible and keep supporting us <laughs> would be great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jenna, thank you for um, stepping into that role. You look like you, you're off to a great start and um, really excited to see all these actions and upcoming years or upcoming months, sorry, <laughs> uh, for this uh, for this school year. Um, yep. I just want to highlight. I'm excited about the um, the work you're doing to bring students in on their goal on their personal goal yeah. setting. Yeah. Um, you have to know like they matter, right? And what they're doing matters, right? Yeah. You might also need to get a test on a computer and they don't understand, like you know. So <laughs> right. you sure they understand that. Yeah, and it, it'll matter more to them being part of it. So yeah. good job and on just that. To see that progress is huge. So yeah. nice. Dr. Clark. Great work. Well, I just have to say, you don't sound like a first year principal. Oh. <laughs> so you definitely sound like a veteran who knows what they're doing. So you just rock it, right? It's just taking a rocket. You're doing a phenomenal job. I'm really proud of the work that's happening. Um at Baker, and I too was impressed with this, how you're talking about the student goal setting and really engaging the students in their own learning and setting goals for themselves. I love that. Um, and there's no way it's your first year, but I know it is. So you did an, an excellent job. Thank you for coming tonight. And this is an action item. It's also an action item. So um, can I have a motion to approve? Baker Elementary School's 24-25 school plan for student achievement. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. <laughs> uh, aye, sorry, aye, aye sorry. Okay, aye. aye, aye, aye. Yeah. All right, wonderful, thank you.
Yes. Yes. We have uh, to be coding because all our notes are the one paper. So, uh -huh. so it would be awkward. So now we're going to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Not awkward. It's not the awkward. Right. Exactly. Um, so off to a great start. I always feel like it's a little um, starting school is a little bit like a train coming to another station where it starts up. You're just trying to like get it going, and then we're already um, full speed ahead. It's lots of good energy. Um, obviously, when we share our SIPSO with you, we're kind of sharing some data and how that data relates to um, what our plans are for this year. So we'll start with our language arts data. Um, this is our uh, FMP data for our little lens, and uh, it's pretty consistent with years, um, with other years that we've had. It's a pretty consistent thing. Um, we know that kids learn to read at different um, paces, so developmentally, they're depending on language and depending on their backgrounds as far as like do they have some exposure to preschool, maybe, or just developmentally, um, some kids will develop math skills before they develop. So what we're always looking for is um, are they continuing to grow? So by second grade, are they growing the level they grow? And that is what we see. Um, when we were looking at data um, this week with Dr. Cloud and the cabinet, we were looking at our kindergarten data as we're starting off this year. And it's actually significantly higher than it's been before. And I really truly believe that's TK. So you look at these TK kids, they were they basically got a whole year of all of that. They are just rocking it in the first day of kindergarten. They are spread out into different classes. I mean, that has just made them, you know, they're the leaders there already. And so um, what a blessing it is that we have TK. I think that's awesome. And I think we'll see eventually we're going to see um, them start at kindergarten at a much higher level and then they'll continue to come. So that was that. Um, Here's our SBK that again tends to be pretty uh, stable. We're always looking at uh, blue and green and the significant number of students that we have who are um, at or above. And the reason for that is that we are ensuring that we're challenging those kids, that they're having lots of opportunities to um, engage with each other, uh, do things that require a lot of critical thinking, higher level thinking, and creativity. So we're we do focus on that. And then, of course, because a lot of money is tied to intervention in the plan, that is what we talk a lot about. But I did want to um, share with you that we are trying to reach the needs of those kids. Our goal is 79%. Um, we, we just hover at 75, 74, 76. So I would love to just like, go and I show you the rest of it. I don't know. But we're going to do that. There are some good data for ELA, um, like I shared with Dr. Cobb the other day, is all over the place, um, especially our language learners, and that's that's really where we're focused this year. Uh, our, 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 the kind of language learners that we are getting are different than we have had in the past, so that's why it's kind of like a moving target. Um, we did redesignate more than 100 um, EL learners um, in the last two years, and those kids were then replaced with students that are coming in and speaking almost no English, but some with no school. Um, so that's a different kind of student than we've had in the past. So we, just like Jen was saying, we're like working to figure that out. What's the best way to meet the needs? Because it's not, they're not kindergartners that haven't been to school. They're like six and seven years and haven't been to school. Um, so that, that makes the data bounce around. So we really just find that you, you've got to just speak down to kids. And you've got to just look at like, who are the kids? Where did, where did they come from? What kind of school have they had? And what do they do next type of thing? Um, the, big, the big percentages um, are not as meaningful. In ELA, um, we have some good, strong programs that have been working well. So we're going to continue to use those. Um, our second and third grade um, flex their reading groups and work with their kids and flex them as well, um, which they have been doing. Um, we've got, we spent most of our money, whether it was the supplemental funds or general funds, on people. So that's where um, we're getting the biggest bang out of our butt. And they have, um, we've got some excellent, excellent intervention teachers, and they are worth every penny and more. Um, so they are doing some. Great pull out all day long, every day. Um, for kid, actually, it's kindergarten through third, and then we're pushing in intervention into four through eight, which is great. Um, supporting the gender interest in implementation that we 
training for last year, which is going to make our small groups stronger, which will start to hopefully um, support those subgroups. And then um, just in making sure that we are really focusing on that balanced literacy and proficiency and writing. Um, we were able to add another two more actually um, ELA intervention um, sections in middle school. And then because we hired a new Spanish teacher that we're sharing with Latimer, we had a little extra wiggle room with that. Um, and she is a Spanish speaker, so she's able to do some designated PL with some of our kids, especially the middle school kids arriving um, speaking Spanish and having very um, different levels of school coming in. So that's been really helpful. Um, so kids are getting lots of support. I think when we're sitting in meetings and we're concerned about kids, we can we're saying, like, well, they're getting this and they're this is going to this is going to this and that is kind of in the six hour day what we have and now we just wrap them up and look for you know monitor progress which um so we're doing that and then uh i read personalized learning you know everybody's using that but that is a it's for us as well and then um should take some of our kind of intervention support down to the curve but again because it's a there's not as many meetings then Maria's going to talk about it. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, on our math data from SBAC, continues to be fairly strong. Um, the blue and green make up about 70% of the, of the pie chart. Um, we have a lot of very motivated students in math. Um, they're eager to do after school activities before school and that Olympiad. So we're looking for ways to challenge those students and keep them going and challenging themselves. Um, and get to the support in the next one. But um, so the subgroups, just like everyone says, the subgroups uh, continue to flounder. Um, we do have 30% of 35% of EL students, or we want to get 35% of EL students on um, grade level. Then Hispanic art subgroups just kind of go back and forth. Um, so we have um, high quality full out intervention, like Sherry said, we have in math and in ELA. Um, in two, three, it's pull out. As they go up to four through eight, we focus more on push in so that they're in the classroom with the instruction with the teachers. Um, a lot of the struggling students are getting a double dose of math in middle school. So their elective is focused on the math intervention. Um, their avid tutorials targeted towards um, math and talking about math. Um, we have the mom math competition, which we started last year that kids were very motivated for. And again, with iReady, we're talking to the kids about their progress and what it means and motivating them to push themselves. Um, EL Learners is the next. Um, so just like everybody says, our, our EL groups are changing. Last year, we had a huge influx of students from Russia. Um, so we were dealing with that. They had taken a few months on their trip to the United States. So a lot of them had some break in their learning, but they had had a strong education before they came. Um, and they're moving. However, this year, the big influx is from Colombia yeah. and Peru, that region, but mostly Colombia. And that's where we talked about a lot of the kids um, left school at the beginning of the pandemic and didn't go back. Mm -hmm. So we've been challenged by that. Um, we're getting, we're dedicated to meeting the shifting needs. Um, we do have the Pocket Talk translators, which is helping us talk to a variety of different languages. We have 47 different languages, I believe, represented on our campus. So it's, um, it's a lot of different. Fortunately, this year we have a lot of Spanish support and it looks at Spanish. So um, it's been going fairly well with that. Um, so what do we do? We have lots of ELD strategies embedded 
in small group and instruction, targeted instruction. We are using the Hello curriculum with the newcomers who have very little English. Um, English 3D, um, we're implementing as well with the middle school students who um, are struggling with or don't have much English. Designated ELD instruction is the push. Again, the small group instruction targeted at the needs of the kids. Um, as Sherry said, we do have, fortunately, the Spanish teacher who has been able to take on the groups and target really what they need, um, taking them out of their ELA class part of the time for when they're doing things that they don't really can't follow. Um, we have the EL electives for newcomers and for long-term EL struggling students. Um, there is professional development, um, talking to people about how they meet the needs, the cries are coming from the teacher because the needs are changing. Um, we are working to do more outreach with our Spanish speaking families. We're planning more of a monthly meeting rather than the four ELAC meetings mm -hmm. and looking at ways to get them more engaged. And the first classes are offered for parents. How is that participation, the English classes for parents? Oh, sorry. How's the participation for the English classes for the parents? For the English classes, I think the participation is better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it's nice. generally not our Spanish speaking things. Oh, not, yeah. It's um, Japanese. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I get to chat with everybody about our school climate. Next slide. So um, starting with our student climate data, based on the panorama survey that our kids took at the end of last year, it's broken between third to fifth grade and sixth through eighth grade. Um, so I'm not going to go into all the details, but a couple of highlights that um, we talked about are um, data for uh, school rigorous expectations has gone up from last year, um, which is great because it's definitely become a district focus for us. We're using language, we're using the word rigor, discussing what rigor means with our teachers, which then is making, you know, its way to the students that are starting to recognize, oh yeah, we are being challenged in our classes. Um, our safety, school safety numbers are, are down a little bit and, um, I think part of that could be because of all the fencing that we are currently in construction for. So um, it's just on everybody's mind really fresh, um, especially in the climate of the world we live in. So it will be really interesting to see what those numbers are, hopefully at the end of this year when the fencing is done. And in theory, we hope that those numbers are gonna increase and they'll start to feel a lot more safe. Um, our student relationships with their teachers are also um, making improvements from last year. And I think a lot of that is because of our school-wide emphasis on engagement, how we can get parents feeling comfortable on campus, how our students can connect with teachers on the more personal level, sending home postcards with little you know, notes on what they've been noticing. So just those more individual um, purposeful connections, I think, are making um, a big change. And then our goal, <clears throat> excuse me, our goal for our student data is, in, in general, we're revamping our PBIS um, restorative practice this year. We have a leadership team um, of all different grade level teacher representatives that are helping us kind of discuss, um, create how we can really support our kids in a more restorative manner rather than punitive. Um, and that is kind of guiding us in with our student climate data. Then the teacher climate data, um, this one, we I, when I was looking, comparing it from last year's data, the first thing that I noticed was an increase in the number of teachers that participated. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had a whopping seven. Mm -hmm. This year, we had 22. Nice. So oh, that's great. Right. <laughs> Someone's really pushing the, take the panorama survey, <laughs> survey excuse me. Um, our feedback and coaching is slowly going up, um, but I think that is definitely one of our goals this year is to really do some um, purposeful walkthroughs. We also did some calibrating walkthroughs together um, about a month ago to get the year going. Um, we have been using, Clover gave us little um, pads of paper that say wow and wonder. And we've been using those and we actually are finding that they're um, kind of like an invitation for teachers to come and talk to us, especially if we're asking them like a question about what's going on in the classroom. So hoping that those conversations more often can lead to feedback and coaching in addition to, of course, the normal um, evaluation cycles with our teachers. 
Um, our teacher efficacy is down a little bit. And like both Maria and Sherry were saying, I think a part of that has to do with the changing um, profile of our students and how they're coming in having missed three or four years of schooling, or they are coming in with a life that is very new to us. They've gone through trauma and struggles, even just trying to get here to California. So I think our teachers are kind of feeling they want to help, but they're not really sure how. So that could be part of the reason why the efficacy is down and also why our whole focus this year is really to pour our resources and our expertise um, into those kiddos to help them um, to and to support our teachers through you know the Jan Richardson strategies from last year, the district of PD focus this year on writing um, to just kind of give more tools in their toolbox to hopefully increase that efficacy. Um, and then we're very lucky too when it comes to the teacher climate. Um, in general, our school climate data is, is high, and we're very lucky to have such amazing teachers that love to collaborate together, support each other, um, and support our students. And then the family climate data, next slide, thank you. Um, so this is from our families. Our goal at the end of the school year is that 75% of our families feel connected and confident in meeting their individual students' needs. Um, we are, our PTO is like, rock stars this year and they are really focusing on engaging community our families in more than just like us trying to engage them but they've revamped their um, PTO website they started a huge Instagram that's getting parents involved they're doing beginning the school year meet and greets through the grade levels so that families can be families can feel connected so um all of that is really hoping to help improve and increase our family climate data um, more than just what we can do. So we're really bringing our whole community to help those numbers increase. And then our key actions, <clears throat> I talked about a lot of them, but um, just I'll highlight a couple more. Do you mind if you listen to But yeah, just thank you. <laughs> He's, with you. He's just so into it. <laughs> um, I won't go through all of them because we've talked about some of them, but a couple that I wanted to highlight. Um, for students, like I said, we're revamping our PBIS and restorative practice, so that is a huge thing we're taking on this year, but it's going really well so far. We love working with our leadership team. We've also started a care team this year, which is, involves our counselors, our psychologists, and our admin, and we meet every other week to talk about kids, kids that maybe are needing you know, some support in the SEL realm, um, kids that are having behavior issues that teachers are needing support with. And it's it's great to kind of kind of talk as a team, decide, okay, what can we do to support these kids? How can we track some data and then get back and communicate with them, the stakeholders involved? And that's we've been enjoying that. And then um, we have those newcomer groups to help with the new um, families that are not English speakers, um, CSF chapter. We've also revamped our elective wheel. We got some new um, middle school teachers this year with really unique expertise and own their own passion. So um, the, our elective wheel is super engaging, especially this year, and I think the kids are enjoying the variety. Um, for staff, a couple to point out, like I mentioned, our increased and calibrated walkthroughs we're really focusing on. Um, at our data collaboration days, um, we really are gonna focus on, this next one is gonna be on writing and kind of calibrating our narrative writing. Our previous one was on guided reading and um, the reading data. And then those are also the times when we're having some of these more rich conversations about how we can support those outliers, both the really low ones, but also the high flyers that meet the challenges. And then for family, um, having Maria up in the office as a Spanish speaker has been a game changer for us. And so she's really taking on um, connecting with those Spanish families, like she mentioned, doing more of a monthly um, connections with them. Um, and using her expertise for that. And then we also have a parent engagement committee that um, we started last year. Yeah. And kind of just talking about with parents, how we can get everybody involved, some of those families that maybe we don't see as much. And so that's continuing this year. Um, and we've got our counselors also that are doing parent engagement activities or events, both during the day and evening time to kind of just, again, wrap those families up in areas they need support with, but also just bringing them onto campus. Well. So we're off to concern. Okay, um, top 28 funds. 
we're struggling to spend these, to be honest, <laughs> um, because we had a pretty robust art pro arts program um, already. Um, we had starting arts um, during the school day um, in place already. Um, our art in action um, well, it has been funded by PTO, so we're, we're um, adding some um, materials and some licenses and we're going to use the Prop 28 to fund that. That allows kids um, K-5 to get weekly art lessons. Um, we, we didn't want to hire an art teacher because that's one of the biggest volunteer um, machines um, on campus. And I feel like that that would turn away so many people who that's what they need to engage, especially because a lot of our um, parents that volunteer in art are multi-language speakers. And so they're, they're not necessarily comfortable coming in and doing the reading center, but they'll come in and do that. You know, so, so I, I don't want to dismantle that. Um, we did add a musical um, so that we could do two um, because our participation has been so high and then we, we came up with a system where everyone can only do one. So mm -hmm. at least we're, we're recruiting more people. We tend to find that our school is so big that anything we do is just hard to get enough people in to be able to do it. Um, and we're funding also we have a third through fifth grade choir. Um, I think they're going to be performing Patch on the 25th of year round, and we're going to have a school choir as well. So those are those are growing and building. And, and we're looking for other ways, but there, we just don't have more time in the day, honestly. So I'm not sure where, where the kids would go. Because <laughs> they also have to learn math, you know, so I'm not exactly sure. We'll keep looking for math. <laughs> Next time. Um, so just as kind of a review, just big focuses for this year, um, like um, they were saying, the PBS development and restorative practice. The staff is really interested in getting restorative practices going um, in a way that's a little bit more systematic. Um, we've definitely dabbled, but in a way that's more systematic. So we're working on that with our PBIS. But I think when you look at our safety score and panorama, um, that it shows that there was a little bit of a problem somewhere, and it's hard to tell where it was because of the way the questions are worded. But you know that we don't want to see safety at the things going down. So we sure that um, Maria Vina Godson is kind of an understatement. Um, she immediately has like wrapped up all these little families. They all come in looking for her. She got them all on text threads, and um, she's got your parents in that we've never seen before. So it's been mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, and we're, and we're really looking forward to having you know this team that's able to do that. Um, lots of targeted SEL as far as the counseling team is doing a lot of proactive stuff. We were getting in the mode where it was just referral, 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 referral. And I, I really believe that a lot of that can happen in the classroom. So we've done some kind of revamping back into the classroom. Like these are things you can handle in the classroom. And the counselors are spending their first couple of months going in classrooms and teaching lessons. We had one particular grade level that was really tough last year, um, and and so they are actually going in there twice a week teaching small group lessons. We're trying to, and those were the kids. Um, I'm like trying to be able to about it. The kids that didn't go to kindergarten or first grade in person, and it, you could tell it's just hard. It's rough, and so they're we're trying to get in there and and teach some really strong SEL, get them to start you know, getting along working together. So before they go to middle school, they're in good shape. And it's actually working pretty well. You see the playgrounds look different. Um, along with that challenge piece, um, we've had some fun things. So we've had alumni come back. We have a, um, one of our kids from Longwood, not Longwood, but it's in high school, but came back um, and is running quiz bowl. So it's those kids all have to get credit and they're all trying to do stuff to get into college. <laughs> we're going to be keeping it accommodate our project. Can we do this at your school? Can we do this at your school? <laughs> I'm constantly like, oh, there's too many things. You know, the quiz bowl was like one of the more organized kiddos. You know? <laughs> so it's really right that like sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, that's not yeah. yeah. But anyway, he's really organized and like it's happening and he's asking me for money and you know, we're, you know, so that's great. So like, all those challenges we're getting from our kids, which is so fun to have them come back. Um, part of the Holy Magic. Also, your math teacher, Manny, that you love, was in that second grade. So, 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 so,
<laughs> and then the last thing, just our professional development, we did something kind of fun today, this year where um, teachers are have three focus kids that they chose that are they're kind of like their action research kiddos. And we let them just completely choose them based on um, trying to get them know, to know them better, um, looking at um, kids they were curious about, maybe in a subgroup that they were curious about, and that kind of thing. So we're going to be, obviously, they're focused on we're going to be really following those three students so that they can really look carefully, get get to know those families a little bit better, and um, and just and kind of follow them to the university. And that's awesome, fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Questions, comments? I was going to say, you guys did your first six hours. Not really much for question. I do I do want to plug. I think the county is doing a, no, I think, I know the county is doing a restorative practice training next Monday and Tuesday. If that's oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Join me. It's during the day. Yeah, I mean, that's the down part. Yeah. <laughs> but. I think that is like really, I mean, it's great to hear about it because I do think it's like, um, I feel like a lot of schools have heard it, tried to implement it somehow, but I really think trying to really dig deep and yeah, do that for our kids is super important. So I'm glad to hear about, about that. Um, I don't really have much questions for you guys. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, thank you guys for putting this together. It is really important to kind of see what the, the work that's going into this, especially with restorative practices. I did hear that you guys were looking at, you have like leadership teams at each of the different grades, grade levels. Sort of, we have one leadership team, but we have representatives for each grade level right. there so that we can cover everybody. <laughs> right. you're, and, you're, and the way you're talking about how you're meeting and uh, um, collaborating with each everyone and trying to bring everyone together and try to understand and problem solve this together is really um, impressive. And I wanna, you know, I'm really excited to see how this comes up and how we continue to make uh, these games for the kids. Um, yeah, really good assessments in terms of like how you were, um, what you assessed as far as like, you know, reasons why there are some struggles because of the different, the, again, like the demographics and just being adaptable um, and really helping out um, with those kiddos. Uh, it's, it, it, it is a struggle, it's a moving target, right? It's, yeah. and um, I'm really excited to see the, the work for this uh, year. I actually did have one question. Um, um, just wanted to pick your guys' brain. For the EL, um, I think subgroups for ELA versus math, there was like, we saw like a huge drop for ELA, but surprisingly not for math. I'm just curious, do you guys have like, yeah. what do you well, think so, of that? Uh, yeah, because uh, you expect it. Interestingly enough, mm -hmm. which doesn't actually kind of cover that, but okay. <laughs> the, all of our, because it's, it's like backwards. Uh -huh. um, for me, a uh, uh, brand new kiddos last year, which we had that huge chunk of right. in Russia, um, they, because they were new covers, they didn't take you. Uh, no. But also, when they took math, but they're out of the ELA scores, but they'll be in them this year. So that'll be interesting. interesting. Okay. And that's actually the opposite kind of a right, right. Game, right? Hmm. Um, okay. But a lot of times I think kids that are coming in, that are coming in with the background in education, uh -huh. the math transfers. Right. Yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah that's what we're doing. But yeah, that, but actually that's a really interesting piece that you brought up with the yeah so it'll be yeah. interesting to see i mean they're yeah. like they're they're going to be second year english speakers so they're not going to rock the s back mm -hmm. but i mean we'll see what they do though it'll really be interesting mm -hmm. thanks i want to celebrate how often you use the word support whether you're supporting students you're supporting families you're supporting teachers you're supporting one another um it's really impressive and um a, great community um, wrapping itself around students. I want to um, also highlight how many students you've redesignated over the last couple of years. You kind of just went shoosh over that back. And that's huge, huge. Yeah. It's huge and it's worth celebrating. So thank you for all of your hard work on that as well. Kind of feels like when they teach them out, and you get <laughs> 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 you know, you know. 
Well, obviously doing something right. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Kahn. One kid at a time. Um, so I am also excited to see how TK plays out over time. Um, seeing what we came in with this fall across the district, actually, even EDS, like uh, our our fall kindergarten reading assessments are much higher than they've ever been. Um, and I do attribute that to TK and some really great teaching that's happening. Um, and then I also, uh, uh, I feel like I've talked to you every day for the last several days in several, so many different conversations. Um, but I do admire, <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, in a good way. We had goal setting, we were at our school today, we had writers, PDF, yeah, all good things. Um, that the Prop 28 money, I am not mad that you're not spending it, but that you are thoughtful about bringing your parents in, keeping your parents in, giving them a space to be a part of the school community and not saying, oh, well, we could just buy an art teacher with that. I just yeah, think that's so thoughtful and strategic yeah. and so much smarter than just trying to spend the money. Um, the money does carry over, so we can think about that. But I think that's a really smart strategy to be able to really focus on engaging the families instead. It's a great way to engage them. It's kind of a nonverbal way. Mm -hmm. And so many of our families feel uncomfortable, but they will come to do art. Yeah, love yeah. it. Nice. So nice job, you guys. Very Thank well you. done. Thank you. So this is also an action item. Yes. Somebody has to move and then someone has to. I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. To approve BSS ipsa for the 24 25 school year. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank feel you. Um, our students are so lucky. So, so lucky that we have such incredible leadership yes. and teachers and families all supporting our kids. And so it really, it's an opportunity to highlight in the SIPSAs, but I just wanted to say thank you. Wow. <laughs> all right. I, Do you want to go home? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, yes. The magic word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a and great rest enjoy of your the rest of your day. Yeah. <laughs>
Aye. Aye. Just <laughs> closing items, future meeting dates. Um, yes, so the Joint Labor Management um, Advisory Council met, I guess that was last week, we finalized the draft recommendations for the educational equity policy to come your way in the form of a work session. And I believe we'd like to come um, do that on November 12th, so okay. at 5 p.m. before the open session to present okay. the process we use, the recommendations we have for what would go into an educational equity policy, we would then get your feedback and then I would go back and write it like a policy. Okay. Um, it's not written like a policy right now. So okay. we'll walk you all through that. But we were hoping that we could do that 5 p.m. on November 12th. Super exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you. then we would just do closed session. We after. Do closed session. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Anything else under future meeting dates? Anyone? Announcements, reminders, requests? Well, <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.